we ended the last video with a couple of problems that we wanted to solve. The first problem was how do we let the Spring Data JPA know that this topic is basically a foreign key to the primary key of the topic table? It's the first question. The second question is how do we get the course service to be able to get all the courses for a particular topic? We have get all courses, now it gets everything. And now we want to add a topic related filter here. So how do we do those? So let's start with the course class. For both these problems, there are shortcuts in the Spring Data JPA framework, which let you build these things pretty easily. Now let's look at that. What do we have to do? The first thing is the topic. How do we establish a mapping between the course and the topic? This mapping is what's referred to as a many to one relationship from the course, right? If you look at a course, there could be many courses which are associated with the topic. So this relationship between the course and the topic is a many to one relationship. So it turns out in order to establish this kind of a many to one relationship, you use another annotation, which is a JPA annotation. And that annotation is at many to one. I'm gonna import many to one from Java X dot persistence. Like you've seen with the other two annotations, all the JPA annotations are in the package javax.persistence. It has nothing to do with Spring Boot or Spring Data JPA. It's basically JPA itself. You can use many other frameworks, which do ORM, which have JPA support. Like for example, Hibernate can just read this annotation and know exactly what to do. Now let's look at the course service. The course service is making a call to the find all method. This is not good enough anymore. We wanna be able to create a new method on the course repository, which finds courses by topic ID. And that doesn't exist right now because the CRUD repository has just the basic CRUD operations. It doesn't have these kind of filters. Now what we're gonna do is go to the course repository and add a new method over here. You remember I told you that the course repository is basically inheriting all the methods that come from the CRUD repository. What the Spring Data JPA framework lets you do is define methods in your course repository, which are just method declarations. This is an interface, right? So you just do method declarations. And what the Spring Data JPA framework is gonna do is it's gonna look at your method name and figure out what's the implementation that you need based on that, which is, which is kind of crazy. So let me explain what I mean by that. Now, what is the method that we need? We need a method which takes in a topic ID and returns a list of courses. Now let's say I make this method here public list of courses, get courses by topic, and then I'm gonna pass in a topic ID. All right, now this is a method that we need. Now, if you define a method like this, you will also need to define an implementation. However, if you define a method in a particular way, if you have a particular name for your methods in your repository class, you can provide a hint for Spring Data JPA about what it is that you need filtered by. Because the CRUD repository already knows how to get records, right? It knows how to get all the course data. What you need is an extra filter so that it gets only the records which match a particular condition. So here's how you name your methods so that the implementation becomes automatic. Let's start with a simple use case. Let's ignore topic for a minute because that's a little bit more complicated. Let's start with a simple use case where you want to get all the courses given a particular name. We see here course has a string property called name. And now this is gonna result in a name column in the course table. Now what if you wanted a method in your repository which gets all the courses based on the name? Now let's say this is get courses by name. All right, and uh, let's call this name. Now let's say you want this method. Now there is a particular way in which you can call this method so that the Spring Data JPA provides the implementation automatically. Now, what is that name syntax? The name of the, this, the method should follow this particular structure. First, it should start with find. If you look at the service, you see here that all these find methods start with the word find. 
See, there is find one and there was find all. So when you create your custom find method, it should start with the word find. Now, if I wanted all the courses, I do a find all. If I'm doing this, I don't really need to provide the method because it's already there as a part of CRUD repository, but this is not what I want. I want to filter by a particular condition. So the next portion of this name will be a by. And then what is the property based on which we want to filter by? In this case, it's name. And then the method argument will contain the name. And with this, I'm done defining a method which gets all the courses based on the name, right? So this is a method which takes in the name, any arbitrary string, and does a search in the database, in the course table, for all the courses that have the name property as what you're passing over here, right? Now, this is all you have to do. Now, in your service or anywhere else, if you want to filter courses based on name, that's all you have to do. You have to say course repository dot find by name, and then you pass in whatever name you want, and this method this is going to be implemented by the Spring Data JP, and you're going to get only the courses which have the name as what you have passed in. Right? That's pretty cool. You don't have to do the implementation yourself. You just have to define your method with that particular structure, and it's going to work. Now, let's say you want to create a method which returns all the courses which have a particular description as a string. Now, how do you do that? Again, it's fairly simple. It's exactly like this. You have a list of courses. Instead of name, you say find by description. And now what's going to happen is the Spring Data JP is going to say it's find by and it's going to split this portion of the method name and see if it matches a field here. Well, it matches this one. So what it's going to do is it's going to run a filter and uh, whatever your string you're going to pass, you can call this, it really doesn't matter. So whatever you're going to pass, it's going to match that to the description column in your database and then return only the courses that match that. So it's it's actually super easy. You can create uh, multiple methods like this and have it be available anywhere else in your, in your uh, project. But this is not what we need. What do we need? We need to filter by topic ID. So will this work? Well, find by topic would have worked if the topic property on the course was a string. Now let's say this was a string. I could have done this. I could have said find by topic and passed in the topic name, which was a string. That would have worked. But unfortunately, this is not a string. This is a class of its own. So not only do I have to specify this property, I also have to specify the property of the class that is, which is the ID, I have to add that also to the method name. So when I'm referring to a property, which is a string, I just say find by and the property name. But I'm referring to a property which is not a string, but it's an object, and I'm looking at a field in that object, in that class, I'm gonna have to specify that field name as well. In this case, it's topic ID. All right, I'm gonna pass in the topic ID. Now what this is gonna do is, it's gonna let Spring Data JPA know that what you're looking for is the topic property on the course, but then that's not all. You're looking at the ID property of that topic property, and that's what you need to find. And that ID is provided over here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is in my course service, I'm going to get all courses given a topic ID. And here, what I'm gonna do is rather than do a find all, I'm gonna say find by topic ID, and I'm gonna pass in the topic ID. And when I get the course, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna add it to the courses list. But here what I'm doing is I'm filtering by this particular ID. And thanks to this interface declaration, the method declaration in the interface, it's gonna work seamlessly. So I'm gonna save this. And now in my course controller, uh, now I have the topic slash ID slash courses. And now here I'm taking that ID and passing it to get all courses off ID. Now I'm passing this to the repository and which is this new thing that I've implemented. And of course, the many to one mapping is what maps it to the topic table. All right, now let me save this and execute it. When I do a get of all topics, 
I'm not gonna get anything but what I'm gonna do is make a post or I'm gonna post JavaScript and I'm gonna post Java so now I have a bunch of topics here JavaScript and Java now what I'm gonna do is create a course I'm gonna take Java here topics slash Java if I were to query the courses here, if I were to do a get of topic slash Java slash courses, I'm not gonna get anything because it doesn't exist. Now, what I'm gonna do is make a post to topic slash Java slash courses and in the body, gonna paste this payload. Well, the ID is Java streams and then the name is Java streams. Just an example course. And if I were to make a post request to the courses, not gonna get anything back, but now let's do a get to topic slash Java slash courses. And I'm gonna get the Java streams course. And if you notice, there is a topic payload added to this. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting the job, the course content, and I'm also getting the topic that it is associated with. And the reason this is showing up is because in my entity class, I have this topic. What I can do to prevent this from happening is to lazily load this. I'm not gonna go into the details of that because that's very much a JPA concept and we are in a Spring Boot course. I don't wanna overwhelm you guys with talking a lot about JPA, but that is something that you can do to potentially avoid the topic object from being fetched. But uh, right now it's fetching everything, so it, you get the topic as well. Now what I can also do is I can go to the courses slash Java dash streams. So I'm basically accessing the ID directly. If I were to do a get, I'm going to get just that one thing. Now let me go ahead and update this. Uh, I'm going to do a put request here. And in my body, uh, I don't have to specify the topic here because, like I said, that's something I'm going to figure out automatically from the URL. So here I'm going to the URL Java. So I'm going to figure that out automatically. So I'm going to say this is uh, Java 8 streams, which is the name of the course, and Java 8 streams description, which is the description I'm gonna put. Again, nothing in the response. If I were to do a get to, again, Java slash courses, I hit send. So you see the updated value shows up, right? So this is a quick, uh, introduction to JPA and the focus here is to see how Spring Boot kind of helps you build these entity classes and uh, map them into relationships. The first thing that you had to do was establish the relationship using the right annotation which establishes that dependency whether it's a one-to-many or a many-to-one and then in your course repository in whatever repository you have you need to define these extra methods. So you can define a bunch of find methods which provide you the functionality without you having to write it. For simple CRUD, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to define even this. However, when you're finding records, if you need to filter by a particular field, what you need to do is create a method in that course repository interface. You don't have to implement it, you just have to declare it. And the key is the name of the method. The name should be find by and then the property. So if the property is basically an object, then you need to narrow it down further to the property of that object, which is a property. So in this case, topic was a property. Now I'm filtering by the ID of the topic. So I need to specify that as well. There is uh, one more step that I mentioned in the beginning of this unit, which is the lessons uh, API. So not only do we have a courses API, you also have a lesson. So let's say I have this courses slash Java dash streams. Now let's say I want to get all the lessons here. I want to be able to make a get request here and get all the lessons that belong to this. So this involves creating a new package, which is the Spring Boot Starter dot lesson, creating a model object for it, the controller repository and the service. I'm not going to do this because most of the things that you would learn there have already covered with these lessons. So if you want to give it a shot, definitely do take that up as an exercise and create those APIs, controllers, uh, services, and repository. But at this point of time, this is where I wrap up the JPA integration.